The story begins with Jerry, his wife Karen, and their two hard-working daughters. And, like those who are lubricated with cream, they live a sweet, natural, and beautiful life until the day comes when they will have to work their entire lives. They'll go out as usual, dressed in Arabic, but the street will still be there, and police cars and helicopters will be destroying it. Jerry switches on the radio to find out what's going on in the country and to check on his wife and children. When he turns on the radio, he learns that the World Health Organization has declared that the rabies disease has spread significantly in Taiwan and is now a threat to everyone. This means that everyone must take care of themselves in order to avoid waking up one day and eating their own children. Then he rides his bike by and smashes Jerry's car mirror. Jerry goes down to get the mirror he used to conceal everything in his pocket, but he is stopped again by a police officer who tells him, lock yourself in the car quickly and be careful about getting out of it. The officer began to speak, but before he could finish, a large truck hit him and threw him into the air. But Jerry tries to flee in his car to protect his wife and children, but a car hits them and they all cause a serious accident. Then everyone starts fighting, and everyone starts eating around him. Jerry is attempting to grab his family and flee while observing the people around him to determine what is going on. Everyone was acting insane, and the person who gets bitten by the other transforms into a similar person and begins attacking the other healthy people. It looks like, teacher, that rabies has spread to them as well. Then Jerry packs his family into a large car and flees on the road, while the rest of the people on the ground continue to eat each other and become insane. Then Jerry has a big problem because his daughter is having trouble breathing, and a cow with a nebulizer in her nebulizer became disoriented while they were fleeing the field. Her mother was trying to teach her how to control herself to some extent through self-training, and she needed her treatment so she could breathe normally again. They go to a location and seek assistance. At this point, he calls Jerry, a co-worker named Thierry, and asks him to return to work for them because the disease has spread and they need his help to stop it from spreading throughout the entire world. He tells Jerry that he will send a plane to save him and transport him to their base of operations. Then Jerry goes to the mall to stock up on medicine and food for his children and wife, as there will be a crisis at this time and people will be unable to find food or drink. However, two men arrive at the mall and attempt to assault his wife. Jerry kills them and saves his wife, but when they rush out to their car, it is stolen. Here, they must hide in a large building, and Jerry contacts Thierry, who knows his address, so that Thierry can send him the plane that will transport him away from the disease that has spread throughout the city. As Jerry exits the building, he locks the door to prevent the zombies from following him. But the zombies break in and chase him down the stairs. Jerry continues to run with his wife and children until two married couples enter their apartment to protect them from the zombies who are chasing them up the stairs. And the apartment's owner brings food and drinks to him, his wife, and his children. He flew down the stairs after finishing what he was eating. Jerry turned on the radio and heard the city's governor say, there is a dangerous virus that has spread throughout the entire city, and everyone is turning into zombies, and everyone must leave. Citizens prefer to stay in their homes and never leave for two or three weeks, until the disease is under control and the city returns to normal. Store as much food as you can so you don't have to go down the street again and get bitten by zombies. Jerry then spends the night with the owner of the apartment they broke into and begins to prepare to climb to the roof so they can board the plane. He also wraps a lot of paper around his arms to keep people from biting him and turning him around. Then he invites the people who live in the apartment to accompany him on the plane, but they are afraid and want to hear what the city leader has to say and stay in his apartment, which is a safe place for them, so they refuse all of Jerry's invitations. Following that, Jerry and his family quietly walk up to the roof, where the zombies attack them. However, zombies appear and attack them. Jerry can defeat them, but when he does, his mouth will be filled with zombie blood. Jerry fears he will turn into a zombie like them and runs up to the roof, where he stands on the edge of the building. He will fall and die if he turns into a zombie, but he knows that blood has no effect on humans. The son of the people Jerry and his family used to stay with comes up to the roof at this point. He comes out to them after his father and mother have died, and Jerry abandons him. He arrives after zombies attack them, but Jerry is able to defeat them. Following that, Jerry, his family, and the son of the man who owns the apartment ride with some of the people I sent to Jerry to transport him. To get away from it, they board a plane and fly around the city. They notice that the entire city is in shambles, that many people have turned into zombies, and that the city has been completely destroyed. Money can be found everywhere. They then land their plane on a ship in the middle of the ocean, where Thierry will be surrounded by troops and good people who do not turn into zombies. They choose to live in the ocean because it is safe from zombies and other city dangers. When they arrive at the ship, Thierry turns them around, and Jerry realizes that the president is no longer alive and that no one knows where his vice president is. 
The world is in chaos, and we need to find a way to prevent zombies from taking over the entire planet. Then, Thierry provides Jerry and his family with beds and lodging on the ship. He then leads Jerry to the ship's control room and informs him that the virus is spreading throughout the world and that they are still trying to figure out where it came from so they can figure out what to do. Then they'll discover that the virus originated in Korea, and they'll send a doctor named Dr. Fassbach there to try to find a way to permanently eradicate the virus and save humanity. At this point, Thierry informs Jerry that he was chosen to accompany Dr. Fassbach and protect him from zombies. He must agree to their request, because if he does not, he will not be required to stay on the ship with his family, because his presence here is only contingent on his acceptance of the mission. Jerry saw no other way to save his wife and children than to agree to this suicide mission where he could die at any time. But he asked them to save his wife and children, so he'll do whatever they want. Then Jerry goes to say goodbye to his wife, who has a phone and can contact him until he returns with her children. Jerry then boards the plane with the rest of the team and Dr. Fazbach, who is in charge of keeping him safe. Then they arrive at their destination, but the airport is empty and no one is there. They fly down to a specific runway and land carefully so as not to be distracted. Jerry knew at the time that Dr. Fazbach didn't use his brain for anything, so he continued to walk behind him to keep him from dying. It was his responsibility to protect him until he completed his mission and returned healthy. However, as soon as they step off the plane, a zombie attacks one of the soldiers. This frightens Dr. Fassbach, who dashes back to the plane but trips and falls. At that precise moment, a bullet from his gun accidentally discharges and strikes his brain, killing him before he can begin his mission. The special forces, who had been waiting for the plane, then arrive and transport them to their camp, where they will run the operations. And at the time, Jerry learned from special forces dealing with zombies that zombies respond to sound and that bullets do not kill them, but only slow them down. They die if a bullet hits them in the head. Then Jerry meets Alice, a soldier who witnessed an old zombie incident. We were here with the other soldiers, he says, but the doctor who was supposed to be dead on the ground got up and attacked me, and he was able to kill everyone who was there at the time. Everything is in the room, but he'll build it because he probably doesn't care about me. We tried to get any paper in the room that would help us understand zombies, but it was burned to get rid of any zombies that were present at the time. The forces in the camp then allowed Jerry to meet a prisoner they were holding. He was the only one left with the other soldiers at the time. He went insane after witnessing what had happened, so they restrained him so he wouldn't hurt anyone. If you want to know what's going on, go to Palestine, the man says later. They foresaw everything that would occur, and they erected high walls around Jerusalem to protect it from the zombies and disease that would engulf the world at the time. Go meet Jorgen there, and he'll tell you everything. Then Jerry realizes this guy is insane, and he pulls out all his teeth so that when it's his turn, he'll be a zombie who can't hurt anyone when he comes to bite him. Then Jerry informs his team that they will be traveling to Jerusalem because it is the only way for him to figure out what has happened in the world and why the zombies are spreading so quickly. Following that, they begin refueling the plane so that they have enough fuel for the entire journey and do not have to land in the land of time to get more. Then they all move quickly to avoid making a sound and attracting the attention of the zombies. But just then, Jerry calls him. When his phone rings, zombies attack all of them at once. But Jerry and his companions can quickly board the plane and flee before the zombies capture them all, bite them, and turn them into zombies. Then they arrived in Jerusalem, where they were permitted to land. When they asked to meet with Jorgen, he asked, when did you decide to build such high walls? Who in the world did that? What made you believe that this was how the world would end? As humans, we don't believe the need until we fall into it, are shocked, and can't find a way out, Jurgen responded. Then we sit and reflect on the past, saying, I wish that it happened. For example, would you have believed someone who told you a few days ago that zombies were going to take over the world? At the time, everyone would have called him crazy, including you, he continued, but I was the polar opposite of all these people. I decided a long time ago to construct these walls to protect and keep us safe, and as you can see, I did so. Everyone wishes he could move in with us. Jurgen went on to say that in 1973, Jews believed they had the world's strongest army. During the 1973 war, however, the Egyptians hit them in the back with hoses, shattering their defense myth. Since then, Jews have always believed that danger could strike at any time, which is why they erected these fortifications to protect themselves. Jorgen then took Jerry on a tour of the city to show him all of the precautions they had taken. He stated, anyone who wants to come into the city with us and come to us will be admitted immediately. The only requirement is that he not be a carrier of the disease and be completely healthy. The sounds coming from within the city, however, drew the zombies outside the walls in. All of the zombies are now attacking the city's walls and erecting a high barrier with their bodies in order to gain entry and destroy the city. 
and all of the forces are attempting to prevent them from entering the city by fighting them and preventing them from entering. But they fail, and all of the zombies infiltrate the city and attack everyone. And Jerry is aware that zombies have infiltrated the city. He observes them and notices that the zombies are attacking everyone around them except an elderly man, who runs away from them unaided because he is not nearby. And Jerry is taken aback, wondering why they didn't do anything about this man. What is the gimmick here? But he can't think because zombies are attacking everyone, devouring them, and turning them into zombies. Soldiers infected with zombies began to blow themselves up and set off their bombs in order to avoid becoming zombies and to kill a few zombies. Then, Jerry attempts to flee from a location far from the main street, but he is surprised when a large army of zombies attacks him and the other guards with him. And Jerry notices once more that there was a boy with cancer who was surrounded by zombies who did not touch or harm him. Here, Jerry begins to believe that zombies cannot attack certain people, such as the elderly man and the sick young man, and he begins to wonder why zombies do not attack them directly. A zombie then attacks Segan, a soldier with Jerry. Jerry kills the zombies, but one bites Segan, forcing Jerry to amputate her hands to prevent the infection from spreading to her. And Jerry stays by her side, counting from 1 to 10 to keep her from turning into a zombie. When he is certain she will not, he orders the soldier with him to take the gun away from her. Then he binds her hands until they reach the plane, where he treats her. However, he stole Jerry's plane and fled with it because he was afraid zombies would be able to board it. He then sold Jerry and the other people in his company. And Jerry must flee on a passenger plane with Segan in the cam, a soldier who is still with him. Jerry then calls Thierry and informs him of what has occurred. He also claims, some people are not attacked by zombies and are not afflicted with the disease. I need to know why, and I'd like you to take me to the nearest medical lab so I can investigate. Then Jerry gives him the coordinates of the lab he's going to, and there were zombies on the plane with them at the time. He can attack the flight attendant and turn her into a zombie like him, and everyone in the second class will become zombies as well. Jerry is attempting to separate the first class passengers from the second class passengers in order to get as far away from the zombies as possible. He also requests that they not make any noise or speak so that the zombies do not enter their cabin. People's bags were placed between the two steps. However, as they drop the bags, one of them throws one at the zombies. The zombies then discover their location and begin attacking them. Jerry picked up a bomb from Sehan and threw it at the zombies. An explosion happened, ripping the plane apart and pulling all the zombies down to the ground after they flew into the air. After the plane has exploded and been completely destroyed, the pilot will be able to safely land the plane away from danger. Then Jerry and Segan will rise in peace and assist each other on their way to the medical lab to try to solve the mystery of the virus that wiped out the entire world. Then Jerry becomes exhausted and collapses in front of the medical lab, where they should investigate why. Jerry has been insane for three days. We then return to the ship, where Jerry and Thierry's families are. After three days of being unable to contact Jerry, the ship's captain decides to throw Jerry's family off the ship and return them to their land camp. Thierry doesn't like the idea and tries unsuccessfully to convince the commander to drop it, so Jerry's family walks off the ship and takes a helicopter to the camp where they're going. When Jerry arrives at the lab, he is tied to the bed he was sleeping on because they are afraid he will be bitten and spread the disease. Then Jerry requests that they untie him, and they allow him to dial the number on the radio they have, which the man answers. They know his wife and children left the ship because they hadn't been able to get him food for three days, and he knows his wife and children have gone to another safe camp on land. Everyone in the lab then feels better when they learn that Jerry joined the American forces and is now working to find a cure for the disease. Then Jerry instructs them to create a powerful virus, but there is a cure, it is simple, and they will not die. Then he meets with the woman in charge of drugs and viruses. We tried giving zombies all kinds of viruses, but nothing caught them or worked as a vaccine to keep them from getting sick, she says. But Jerry surprised them by saying, this virus isn't caused by zombies, it's caused by us humans. I want to do an experiment to see how we can get rid of these zombies, he explained. And Jerry begins telling them everything he witnessed when the zombies attacked the old man, the sick young man, and Sijin after he was injured and her armor was severed. He informs them that zombies typically attack healthy people who are free of disease. They also surprised him by telling him that getting to any of the viruses here was difficult because the department they were in was infested with zombies who controlled every area. Trying to get in there was also considered suicide. In addition, one of the humans would have to volunteer to be injected with the lethal virus so that he could determine whether or not his experiment would work on zombies. Jerry steps forward and declares, I'll be the one to infect myself with the virus. Then Jerry begins to move with Segan and a lab doctor who is assisting them in locating the viruses. Then they open the door between them and the zombies, allowing them to enter the second section, which is also filled with zombies. 
However, the door makes a noise, and the zombies pursue them. Sigan kills one of them by shooting him in the head. However, the rest of the zombies in the area rush toward them and attack. Everyone goes their separate ways here. The lab doctor and Sigan flee and return to the safe area. Meanwhile, Jerry, who is running, detects the presence of viruses in his face and runs to get them. Following that, Jerry caught a variety of viruses that were present in the lab. He didn't know how to communicate with the doctor in charge of the viruses to determine which ones were appropriate, so he took them all. When he tries to leave and return to the safe area, he encounters a doctor who is waiting outside for him to leave so he can begin attacking him. Jerry is perplexed and unsure what to do, so he decides to inject himself with one of the existing viruses in order to escape. This is the only way to keep the zombies away from him. He then injects himself with the virus and waits a few minutes for the virus to be detected in his body. He then walks up to the door that separates him from the zombie and unlocks it. The zombie doesn't hurt him and doesn't even notice him. His plan will work here, and he will figure out how to prevent the disease from spreading to the rest of the healthy people. Then he turns on the Pepsi machine, which makes noise and attracts zombies, and returns to the safe zone. They didn't do anything to him when he returned from being among the zombies because they didn't know he was there. Following that, Jerry moves toward the camp where his family and his family are staying, and the lab sends the virus vaccine to the rest of the world in order to stop the disease from spreading. And Jerry returns to see his family after the virus has been eradicated and all other armies around the world have killed all the zombies because there is no way to treat them. This is the final scene of the film, 